Good afternoon, everyone. The time is 3.31, so we'll now call the meeting of the School Health Advisory Council to order. Uh, before we begin, Dr. Hines is on the call with us today. Dr. Hines, would you like to say a few words to the SHAC committee before we begin? I would. I want to say welcome to everyone and thank you again for your service on uh, this very important committee um, that really looks at you know, how we can help promote the safety, health, and well-being of our students. So um, can't say enough about how important this process is. I want to say thank you, and I'm going to turn it back over to you, Wade. Thank you, Dr. Hans. All right, our first item is to consider the approval of the minutes from the October 26th, 2021 SHAC meeting. Uh, the minutes were emailed to all council members prior to today's meeting, but Mrs. Misty Westover, our parent co-chair of the SHAC, We'll read the minutes of the main topics from that meeting. Mrs. Westover, if you're ready. Yes. Um, okay. What is SHAC? Dr. Shelley Winkler provided an overview on the purpose of the SHAC by explaining the requirements, duties, and expectations of the SHAC. The presentation included an explanation of how the SHAC assists Conroe ISD in ensuring that local community values are reflected in the district's health education instruction. Dr. Winkler reviewed the SHAC's role in the Proclamation 2022 Adoption of Health and Physical Education Instructional Materials. Uh, Proclamation 2022 Update. Dr. Hedith Upshaw presented the timeline for the CISD Health and Physical Education Instructional Materials Selection Process. Dr. Upshaw explained the selection process for the Instructional Materials Campus Contacts and the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee. Campus contacts and district selection committee members will re meet to review CISD procedures on November 8th, 2021. Dr. Upshaw explained the role of the SHAC in the adoption process. The SHAC will receive an update on Proclamation 2022 at the January 26th, 2022 meeting. The final review and selection will be presented to the SHAC for approval on February 28th, 2022. Dr. Bryce Spear, parent member, asked about the conflict of interest during the instructional material selection process. Dr. Upshaw explained CISD policy in regard to conflict of interest as applied to the Proclamation 2022 adoption. Catch program presentation. Mrs. Jessie Orlando shared a presentation on implementing the catch program on CISD campuses. All elementary and K through six campuses have received updated materials and an online subscription to catch.org. Mrs. Orlando explained how to utilize the resources and she shared ideas on growing interest in the program among students, teachers, and parents. SEL presentation. Mrs. Kimberly Earthman provided information on social emotional learning in CISD, Conroe CISD, excuse me. Mrs. Earthman shared the SEL vision statement and reviewed the concepts of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. A timeline of the SEL curriculum process was also reviewed. Thank you, Mrs. Westover. Before we vote, I'd like to remind everyone of who is and who is not considered a voting member of the SHAC. So I'm gonna share my screen. So as you can see, can everybody see this? Okay, so as you can see, uh, voting members for the School Health Advisory Council include parents, our community and business partners, uh, Conroe ISD administrators who are not assistant superintendents or directors, and our Conroe ISD student representatives. So if you'd like to take a moment and take a look and see, but once again, uh, these are our voting members <clears throat> and also voting members are able to uh, make motions and also second motions during our meetings. Okay, thank you. So I'll now call for a vote for the approval of the amendments as distributed in red. Do I have a motion to vote? You can unmute if you like. I motion to vote. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second I'll second that. Thank you, guys. Any discussion? Okay, if there's no discussion, we'll now vote. All in favor, please type yes in the chat. All opposed, please type no. 
And again, this is for the approval of the minutes from the October meeting. Just like the bodies in there. Okay, it seems to be we have a unanimous vote of all in favor. So the minutes from the October 26th meeting stand approved as distributed in red. Thank you, everybody. The next item is an update on Proclamation 2022. You may have noticed uh, that we only have one main item on the agenda this afternoon. Uh, we want to make sure that we have plenty of time to discuss the adoption process and answer any questions uh, that we can while we're gathered together today. Uh, under, please understand this is still an ongoing process, so I'd like to spend some time uh, updating you all on where we are with the adoption at this time. So I'll, I will share my screen with you again. Okay, so an update on our timeline. So on November 8th of 2021, uh, the Instructional Materials Campus Contacts and the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee met to review uh, Conroe ISD procedures for the review of the instructional materials. On December 16th of 2021, the instructional materials were requested to be sent to Campus Contacts. Uh, with that request, we did uh, ask for hard copies of the texts that were included in the adoption. On January 4th of this year, we uh, sent notice for the process of gathering public feedback, and that was posted on the Conroe ISD website. January 13th, we uh, had the Conroe ISD Instructional Materials Showcase. And on that day, we also uh, opened up public review of all the instructional and ancillary materials. On the next day, January 14th, teacher instructional materials and evaluation forms were sent by email to all campus contacts. And today we're providing everybody with an update. I'd like to take just a moment and uh, show you guys the district textbook committee. This committee um, is made up of PE and health teachers from around the entire school district. Every feeder zone is represented in our district committee. Uh, all grade levels are represented, and also we have health and PE, and we have some district advisors. Um, we really appreciate the time these people are putting into that, not only reviewing the work, but also they'll be gathering the results and we'll be meeting with them to discuss the results of not only campus um, uh, information, but also the public. Um, and some of these people are also members of our shack, so we greatly appreciate their time, and several are on the call today. So Goodhart Wilcox is the only publisher on the final commissioner's list, which is eligible for review and selection. Uh, some of you guys who may have uh, been with us earlier in this process may have seen uh, there were several publishers up for review, uh, but only Goodhart Wilcox uh, has been uh, pushed through as the final commissioner's list. And this is the one that we are gonna review in our district. So the materials that are up for adoption through Goodhart Wilcox, uh, we have Texas Health Skills for Middle School, Texas Health Schools for High School, and Texas Fitness and Wellness Schools. That is uh, one of our high school PE courses. And I'll explain more about that in just a minute. But these are the three that are up for adoption. All instructional materials are 100% aligned with the TEKS through Goodhart Wilcox. The health skills for middle school includes grades six through eight. So this will bring in some of our intermediate folks. Health skills for high school is our health one credit course. It's a half year credit course that uh, is a requirement for graduation. Students in the eighth grade can take this course and also students in the high school may take it. And then the fitness and wellness skills. This replaces the high school, what we know as foundations of personal fitness, which has been in place for many, many years. Um, and I'm gonna explain the high school courses have changed somewhat and I will explain that to you just a moment in this PowerPoint. With each one of these uh, materials, there's a curriculum center for teachers to use, and it has lesson plans, answer keys, presentations, activities, handouts, videos, all those ancillary activities that teachers can use 
to format their lessons and teach the lessons. Um, all of this information is up for review. You can see all these things. So what all the teachers are seeing, the public also has access to. And then this is how you can access it. So Goodhart Bill Cox has set up a link for us. The username and the password is the same for everybody. Anybody in our district who'd like to review the materials, all of our teachers and coaches who'd like to review the materials. Um, this information was posted online publicly uh, earlier this month. This is also located on the assessment and evaluation instruction and materials page on the Conroe ISD website. So if you're jotting this down, go ahead. But if not, if you forget, this is where you can locate the information and also the community feedback surveys located on this page. And you're welcome to uh, review the materials, open that community feedback survey and leave all your thoughts on there. And that will be reviewed by the district selection committee also. That being said, public comment ends January 31st. So less than a week away. So January 31st will be the last time we'll be able to accept public comment from the website. Now I'll take just a moment and explain to you uh, the changes in the high school PE courses. Now foundations of personal fitness, uh, most of us on this call may have had foundations at some point, but that has become lifetime fitness and wellness pursuits. So that has been changed. The big difference also is that this now becomes a full year one credit course and it's no longer a prerequisite course for other high school PE courses. So prior to this, uh, students want to take other high school PE classes, they had to take lifetime fitness, or personal uh, foundations, excuse me. And this was a prerequisite course if they're in a year uh, track. So uh, that has been changed. So this is a one year course now. Individual sports and team sports has been combined into what's called skill-based lifetime activity. And this is also a one, a full year course, one credit, and there's no recommended prerequisite for this course. Another change is the out, Adventure Outdoor Education course is now titled Lifetime Recreation and Outdoor Pursuits. So this is also a full year, one credit course, and again, no recommended prerequisites for this course. Uh, the biggest change is aerobic activities, which we've offered for many, many years. A lot of our, several of our campuses will no longer be offered as a TEKS supported course. So that's the biggest change there. TEKS information. Uh, if you would like to look at the revised TEKS for health and PE, um, the TE website does have pages. I don't know, I, you know, you might want to write this down, but TEA, the Health Education TEKS Review webpage and the physical education TEKS review webpage will take you straight there. It might be difficult to just go to the TEA and try to scroll through all the subtopics. It's hard to find, but these two pages will direct you directly or link you directly to the TEKS. And then when you look at those, you'll still see them listed as draft, but they have been approved for final adoption. They're just undergoing technical edits. And that's why it's listed as a draft. But the TEKS that you see on those pages are the ones that will be in effect in 2022 to 2023. Okay, so what's next for the proclamation? So on January 31st, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the public evaluation forms are due and the teacher instructional materials evaluation forms will be received. So all forms, all review materials will be received on January 31st. On February 1st, we'll have a summary of the review and that will be submitted to the teaching and learning department for review by the district committee. On February 10th, that committee will be will meet to discuss the results of the public review and the material evaluation forms from the campuses. And on February 28th, that's our next SHAC meeting, February 28th, we'll have a final review and selection presented to the SHAC. District Construction Materials Selection Committee members will be a part of that process also in that day. And my contact information, if anyone needs, I'll go ahead and stop sharing. Does anyone have any questions uh, of me or anyone on the team at this time? No, no questions. Okay, so our next item on the agenda is future topics and meeting dates. So we'll continue with the Proclamation 2022 updates 
at our next Jack meeting. And again, that's scheduled for February 28th at 3.30 p.m. Uh, that meeting is currently scheduled as an in-person meeting to be held in the Conroe ISD boardroom. However, similar to what happened recently, if the meeting format changes, I will let you know in advance of the meeting. Regardless, I will email you a copy of today's meeting minutes and an agenda prior to that meeting. Uh, the February 28th meeting will also include a final review and selection of instructional materials, which will be presented by members of the District Instructional Materials Selection Committee. The next meeting dates after February 28th will be April 26th and June 14th. April 26th and June 14th, we've submitted this and I'll remind you each time we have a meeting. Okay, all right, we have reached the end of our agenda. The time is 3.47. If there's no objection, we'll now adjourn the meeting. Second. All right, hearing no objection, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us today with best wishes for good health for you and your family. Uh, and we'll see you on February 28th, everybody. Have a great day, thanks so much.